Alright, well I'm just heading home from work. I just made the classic mistake on my way out of uh, starting to chew a piece of gum and then I completely forgot about it. I put my helmet on and I was going down the road and I almost choked on the thing. <laughs> classic. Never, never chew a piece of gum while you're riding a motorcycle. It's a bad idea. I know from experience. I ended up just swallowing the thing. Anyway, someone made a very interesting, uh, well, <laughs> proposed a very interesting question on one of my older videos. Uh, it was on one of my very first initial videos where I show uh, the new motor I was putting in the bike and the old motor, kind of side by side. And uh, the question is, is uh, what is the horsepower rating? Or sorry, what I think the exact question was, how many horsepower does the does the series wound motor have, the old motor? Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to talk about motors in general here, because this, this is a very simple question, but it's actually a fairly complicated answer. Um, so electric motors typically come with nameplates, or, or I guess uh, rating plates, and for that particular series wound motor that I had sitting on my desk there. Um, the nameplate rating was for 6 horsepower. Now, that rating came along with a uh, speed of 2300 RPM. Um, and it also came uh, it also came with uh, just a, a little note saying uh, continuous. So th that's the continuous rating of the motors. 600 horse, or sorry, 600. <laughs> uh, 6 horsepower at 2300 RPM at 36 volts. That's what the name plate said. Continuous. So what that means is that you can run that motor at 6 horsepower continuous all day long, 24-7, and you won't really have a problem with it ever. Um, and but really, uh, the peak amount of power you can get out of a motor is only limited by a couple things. Uh, when you, a motor is really just a, an electric motor is really just an energy conversion device. It converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. So there's really no limit to how much uh, mechanical power it can produce aside from how much power you can slam into it. So let's say, for example, I take that motor and I put a whole ton of power in it. Let's say I put 60 kilowatts through it. Well, would that be a problem? Initially, no. Uh, it could take that. But you're going to run into kind of three limitations. Uh, the first limitation is uh, heat, thermal dissipation. Uh, once the motor gets hot enough, the insulation on the wires are going to start to melt off. So at that point you're going to start to get shorts developing and your motor is going to stop working. So that means it's junk. <laughs> uh, number two, if you spin the motor too fast, if you apply a very high voltage to it, um, the, the uh, rotor will spin so fast and the force will be so great on it uh, that it'll actually fly apart uh, from the centrifugal force of that spinning rotor. So it'll actually just come apart. Uh, on, all on its own. That's the second thing. And the third thing, uh, this isn't so much a limiting factor, but it, obviously it's a long ter longer term thing maybe, is arcing at the brushes. Um, if you apply a high voltage again, uh, and the motor's spinning very, very fast, uh, you're going to get arcing at those brushes. So you're going to run into uh, durability and longevity problems from that. So, there's a lot of interesting uh, factors at play when it comes to ratings of motors. Now, like I said, those three, lim those three limiting factors, well, you, you can change those to some degree. Um, if you want to pump, put more power into the motor to get more power out of it, uh, you can simply increase the thermal dissipation of the motor. Well, you can do that by uh, doing forced air cooling, or you could even do liquid cooling. And in, in that respect, uh, you can get a lot more power out of a lot smaller of a motor. 
Uh, that's where size comes into play. Is the, the bigger the motor you have, uh, the more you're going to be able to dissipate that heat. And as well, the, the coils of wire in that motor are going to be thicker, bigger. So they're going to have lower resistance and you're going to have less, uh, less energy dissipation. So in that sense, uh, the bigger the better, basically. Uh, the bigger you can, the motor you have, uh, generally the more efficient it's going to be. And uh, the less power dissipation you're going to have in it. And that's why uh, when you see, see ratings for industrial motors a lot of times, uh, you'll see that the efficiency of very, very large motors uh, can get upwards of 95% very easily. Whereas uh, the smaller motors, uh, they struggle to get uh, over 80% efficiency. And that just has to do with uh, both electrical and mechanical properties of the larger motor. And as well, uh, you know, usually in the, in the bigger motors, you're, you're pumping a ton of power into them. And uh, the losses in those motors, uh, compared to the amount of power you're putting into them, uh, is not very much. So that's why the efficiency appears to be so high. Well, because it is so high. Anyway, so that's kind of my, my rant on motors. Uh, so I hope I answered your question there. Uh, the horsepower rating was 6 horsepower continuous on the nameplate. But really, uh, the actual output of the motor will solely depend on how much power you throw at it and how effective uh, you can cool the motor. If you can cool the motor really effectively, you could easily get, you know, 60. You could easily pump 60 kilowatts into one of those motors uh, for a limited amount of time, of course. Too, it's all about time, too, right? If the motor doesn't have time to heat up, then uh, you can pump a lot of power into into it. <clears throat> so that's the video, hope you enjoyed.